And today we have Mr. John Bonnell with us today. Thanks and for having me. <laughs> he is the executive chef of Bonnell's Restaurant Group. Sure. Welcome, John. Thank you. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. You know, we're starting off season four, and you're our first episode for season four. Oh, I love it. Welcome yes. to the Quattro. Oh, yes. Here we go. Yes. Super excited. So we're, we're setting the bar very high for the season four. I love yes. it. Yes. And we have so many questions to ask you. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm here. Let's get started. Okay. First question. Tell us about the Bonnell's Restaurant Group. All right. The Bonnell's Restaurant Group. I am the owner and executive chef. We started this in 2001 with Bonnell's Fine Texas Cuisine. Still there, our flagship restaurant since 01. We all then opened Buffalo Bros, Pizza Wings and Subs in 07. We opened Waters Restaurant uh, in 2010 and then moved down to Sundance Square. So now it's Waters Sundance Square. Then we opened Buffalo Bros Sundance Square in 2019. And the most recent one is John's Grill in 22. So five different locations and uh, Bono's Catering Company. Awesome. Wow, congratulations. So Thank That's you. a big achievement. I appreciate it. I know. I'm so excited about um, learning more about these restaurants. I have been, I think I've been to all of them, even John's Grill. The Grand Slam, newest. there you go. Yeah, yeah, right off of Berry Street. Well, I appreciate that. So, but what I really would like to know oh. is, are you a native Texan? I am a fourth generation Fort Worthian. There you so, go. Yes. Wow, I'm so excited. So you went to school here and... I did. I went to Fourth Country Day and then Arlington Heights High School. Okay. And then I actually went to a boarding school for a couple of years. Then my parents encouraged us to, all my brother and sister and I all, to kind of go off to college and come back. And um, I graduated from Vanderbilt University in 94. I was a teacher in Dallas. I taught middle school and high school math and science. That's what I heard. I yep. heard you were a teacher before you were wow. a professional That's chef. Wow. Yep. I taught uh, math and science and then switched gears and went to culinary school in 97, 98, and then uh, opened my first place in 01. Cool. So who inspired you to be a chef? Oh man, that's a tough one. I had been cooking my whole life and never thought of it as a career. Um, vocational schools weren't talked about as much in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up. I watched a lot of the original Food Network shows when they came out, The Essence of Emerald, Malto Mario, all the, the original shows, and there was a great chef series on PBS that I liked a lot. And I realized one summer when I was teaching, you got all this time off, and I thought all I'm doing all the time is cooking. Yeah. My parents were both really good cooks. Mom could cook anything if it was in a book, didn't matter how technical, what technique it was. My dad liked to do the outdoor cooking and both of them probably were my biggest, you know, um, inspirations. But mm -hmm. as soon as the Food Network took off, I started watching and heard somebody say something about culinary school and had an aha moment. And so you're like, let's do it. That's what I need to do. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I love that. I love that you had a balance with your mom and your dad. Your yeah. dad was more probably grilling and meat. You know your what? mom was probably more casseroles. Yep. And, and we grew up in the outdoors a lot. My brother and my dad and I were always hunting and fishing. So a lot of wild game and fish and just seat of your pants cooking over the, you know, the smoker or the grill, stuff like that. So did anybody say, what are you doing? You're crazy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everybody. I mean, every banker, every business person, and they're all completely and totally correct. It is the riskiest, craziest yes. thing to do to put a bunch of money in a restaurant. I've heard that. that. It's going to work. Yeah. Well, and go from a stable job as a teacher yes. teaching math, uh -huh. um, you know, and then going to that to a professional chef. To the riskiest possible yes. thing right. with the worst hours ever, <laughs> but I loved every bit of it. Do you know the stats on statistically um, how long does it take for a restaurant to open and close? close their doors. Um, independent restaurants typically have a, a little over an 80% failure rate within the oh, first wow. one to two years. I knew it was pretty high. Yeah, a lot don't get the doors open. And I think the biggest reason is that a lot of people think they want to run a restaurant and they've never done it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you said, hey, I'm going to give you a bunch of money and you can open any business you want, it's kind of the first one everybody thinks of. And if you've never worked in a real commercial kitchen or you've never, you know, waited tables, bartended, or kind of been around a lot of those, it's it's an easy way to lose a lot of money real fast. Right. Right. Okay, so I went into um, your restaurant, The Waters, downtown uh -huh. Fort Worth, yeah, in Sundance Sunday. Square, yeah. and Calvin kind of hooked me up, and I had no idea how many <laughs> books we could get. <laughs> so I would love to show everybody all these beautiful books that yeah. you have come up with. I've written four. Yes, and wow, now I have this. three. You've got three of them, yep. So let's, this one is a 2012. Yep, that was our second book. 
So, I mean, I was so impressed. And not only did I buy this book, but it, you signed it as yes. well. <laughs> so when you go into the restaurants, and I believe at any restaurant, yep. you can buy a copy of this book. Absolutely. That was our second one. The first one was John Bonnell's Fine Texas Cuisine. The second one is Texas Favorites. And then the third one we did was for Waters. Uh, it's all seafood. So many people nice. ask, you know, I'm terrified to cook seafood. How do I do it? I'm so impressed. That's a neat one. I'm so impressed with all the books, but this Thank one you. especially because it's seafood. Um, and it's this one is um, catered to, you know, people that like seafood. You but bet. when you open it up, it, you've got calamari yep. and you've got oysters. And, and we did the chapters on this one. I kind of decided to do it by cooking style. So there's a chapter on, like, raw. I mean, what to do with something that's oh, cold. Yeah that's you know simple from oysters and sauces and you know crab claws or carpaccio tartare and then one on saute one on grill so depending on what you feel like doing as far as you know firing up the grill or just staying in and right. you know, saute pan going that's that's how we and i have to admit your oysters at waters is impeccative we i mean do it just a lot of oysters well i love that you share i'm gonna put this right here i love that you share your recipes and the way you cook and you Thank don't you. keep it to yourself i think that's yes. amazing that's been a policy since day one i said you know it shouldn't be a secret right and you know like julia child started doing that kind of mm -hmm. thing i mm -hmm. said why keep a recipe a secret are, yeah. you, are you scared that if somebody right. knew your one mm -hmm. recipe that you'd be out of business yeah Give all of it away. Yes. I don't keep a single ingredient, yes. a, keep a single thing secret ever. You can email any of the restaurants, you can call or the websites and just say, how do you make your house dressing and I'll I send it to you. Amazing. Right, it's so I know when I've done, do um, I know when we have gone to restaurant week mm -hmm. and Benel's sure. is on there and I'm like, okay, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? What's the recipe yep. for the soup? It or... may be simple, it may be really complicated, but I'll tell you exactly. Yeah. Uh, how we do it, and even the farms of, that we are supporting or using, if we if we're using like Diamond H Ranch Quail and you know their website and where you can buy it. So Benel's really cool. is really an interesting restaurant because not only are you doing takeout, mm -hmm. um, you're actually having a farm in the back. Yeah, you're growing your own produce we, and spices. We've and... always liked small farm and ranch, you know, mm -hmm. farm to table kind of approach. And I always thought we've got some extra property on the side of our parking lot. Nice. I always wanted to to plant some gardens. Yeah. I don't know a thing about gardening. I can grow you like a $60 tomato by the end of the year. Like right. one. I can never do it. I've never been good at it. It's not really uh, my forte, but one of the chefs who I had hired named Charles Utes, right before COVID, um, he came over and is also not just a great chef, but a master gardener. There you go. And oh, I wow. said, you know, we've got all this downtime during COVID. We were doing curbside meals and things to go, but we just had a lot of extra time and he said, if you, if you want me to, we can uh, put some plants together and build some raised beds. And we've got like 16 raised beds out there now. That's awesome. And just farm like crazy. That's awesome. It's so fun to have all these fresh tomatoes and beans and peppers and herbs. So and, I've watched the last yeah. several years, I guess, because of COVID, you know, 2020 and then 2021, you kind of evolved this garden. And it's pretty amazing as you drive oh, by it. It's been fun. Um, yeah. Silver Creek Materials provides all the best soil for us. They're local and they said, you know, we want to be part of this project. And now uh, Chef Kobe Rogers is also an amazing gardener. And he goes out there and maps out what he wants to do for the season. And, you know, this is what we're going to plant in such sequences that we can have something going all the time. This last week, we probably had 60 pounds of tomatoes. Oh, massive wow. Armenian cucumbers, oh, wow. lots of squash, peppers, herbs. We have a lot of plums coming off of one of our little oh, trees nice. there. Um, probably going to get some figs this year. We'll see when they pop out. Oh, nice. Peaches, grapes, all kinds of really fun and interesting stuff. That's really that. cool. How do you keep people out of there? There's pretty good fence around. <laughs> okay. That's good. Have to trap a rabbit or two here so, and there and so relocate them. Bring me back to 2020 when COVID happened. Oh, man. And the city kind of fell apart. Yeah. Because we just, we kind of scrambled around because we were basically forced to stay inside. Yep. And what do you do? What do you do as a restaurant that, owner? That hit the restaurant scene really hard. Yeah. Um, we had just signed the lease for John's Grill two weeks before that, and we're ready to start construction mm -hmm. on that. And COVID hit us all so fast, nobody knew what to do. Mm -hmm. So we sat around at Bonnell's. We had to let all the employees go. We fired uh, 234 employees in wow. one day. We were down to 30 people to run four restaurants. I said, we're going to try something. But at Bonnell's, we left uh, four employees to cook. 
and that wow. was it. That's and devastating to everybody. To Not only your family, yeah. but to everybody else's family. Yeah. Just trying to struggle and trying to figure out. If you what, can't open the what, door, you can't hire waiters and bartenders right, and, and right. hostesses and valet. Yeah. I mean, all these positions just got eliminated yeah. overnight. So we sat down. I, I sat down with the four, you know, cooks and said, "What do you guys want to try?" And we spitballed it, opened a few beers, and sat there for a few hours. And finally, I said, "Look." The only two things that I think matter right now are feeding the most possible people for the least possible price that we can do. We have to just abandon our concept of fine dining and fancy food mm -hmm. and feed as many people as we can for the best price we can give it. And we came up with the $40 four packs. We didn't have anybody to answer the phones. We took the website down and put up one splash page and just said, here's what we're doing. Show up at 3.30, form a line, and we're going to try this. And it was absolutely it was amazing overwhelming the first day yeah. I, was, I mean i had no idea if anyone was coming or if everybody was coming yeah, or not right. everybody was coming and there would be lines down the the yeah. service road Far, trying to go farther to... than we could see up right. all the way you know down the yes. service road and it was my, my nephew's got a drone and he flew it one day so we could kind of see where the cars went it was really odd to see the service road with a mile long of cars and a freeway next to it with nobody, nobody on it yes it was kind of eerie um, that is actually the fourth book. I know, I, and I was just going to bring this there you up. Go. I published so, a book just about what that was like from the restaurant point of view. And as I went back through all of my notes and all of the things, I couldn't believe the timeline of when we did everything. It really this shocked me. This is a me. pretty impressive book. I love how you put this together. Mm -hmm. um, you had Mayor um, Betsy Price. Mm -hmm. um, had, she just said, hey, go, you need to help us. Yeah. I mean, let's come up with an emergency plan. Sure. The, the first day that we really kind of knew that it was going to be, you know, bigger than just a, you know, a, a quick little shutdown, we were supposed to have an event for, it was called Shooting with the Chefs for the Food and Wine mm -hmm. Festival, the Food and Wine Foundation, and all the chefs come out to our ranch, and Betsy Price was coming to shoot, and we were going to have this fun fundraiser, and we had to cancel it. It was on Monday, I believe that was the 16th of March, and we had to cancel it and then you know is everything canceling and when the nba canceled and all the colleges canceled yeah i looked at my business partner and i said how are we going to run a sports bar on a college campus with no sports and no college right we're really in trouble here yeah. and i asked some of the other restaurant owners and chefs i said you guys want to still just come out to the ranch and just talk about stuff i was like well i don't know and betsy price said i'll show up and everybody about 15 17 restaurant owners chefs and the head of city health and Betsy Price and my brother, who's a professor of medicine, all sat down in a ranch house. And it was the first time we heard the term social distancing. We spread chairs apart. Right. And we just, we'd never done anything like that. Right. No, no, not and at all. We went around talking about it. And Betsy Price said, I do not intend to shut the restaurants down. That's not what I want to do. And one of the other owners pulled his phone out and said, well, Dallas just shut all the restaurants down. And we got real quiet. And we yeah. knew that she wasn't going to have a choice. And Betsy said, I'm going to do the best I can for y'all, but I won't be able to answer your calls and texts as much as you're used to. Please designate somebody that I can send out official wording through that can just spread it so everybody knows what to do. Mm -hmm. And I looked around the room, the, oh crap, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, we got the email list from the Food and Wine Foundation. and. I got as many emails of all the restaurant people that I knew and we just started this email list. Okay, here's what's happening. We're all shut down on Wednesday. And then, okay, here's the official rules. Now you're allowed to do this, but not that. If your employees are driving around, give them a note that says, you know, they're an essential employee. All these little things. Right. That's how I got the timeline right on the book. I went back through all the emails that I had sent out the whole time. And we actually still keep that email list pretty yeah, active. This book is pretty impressive. Do you, you carry this book at all sure. your restaurants? You bet. Not only um, do you tell the story of how it began, you talk about the duration, you talk about um, even when we came back mm -hmm. into society and we were able to go back to restaurants, I know that you have a picture of Lisa and Todd Miller yeah. and then Tracy and Jason um, Perkins and they he he signed my book as well because he Love was it. like hey I'm on page that's right you know I'm on I'm this page there. and we're open again we didn't and we're we, open again we couldn't open again until they got to 50 percent capacity because 25 just didn't there's nothing <laughs> about 25 yeah. percent that makes any financial sense right. but all the things that happened at the same time were crazy we went through two big ice storms we lost two Valentine's days in a row two right. years in a row um, right when we opened in June were when the protest marches started and it was just so much to deal with all at the exact yeah. same time. Right. Um, 
big power outages, mm-hmm. remember uh, exactly. Ice Mageddon, all, yeah. all the fun stuff. Well, I had the opportunity, I know um, we did Parade of Lights this yeah. last year, and it was just so beautiful to be sit down you know, in the patio and watch um, you know, the parade go by at your yeah. place at the waters downtown. It, it was so funny because I was one of the co like grand marshals the mm-hmm. year that we did a virtual <laughs> online parade and tour of lights. Right. I, I but thought, it just seemed like a little more normal yeah. speed oh, that man. we were we were in. Once we finally started having parties and charitable functions where everybody was back in place and you could see each other's faces again. I thought, okay, this this feels right. Without yeah. the masks. And masks were hard. That was really hard because you're like, what? What did you say? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we're so used to seeing everybody's lips. Sure. And bartenders and servers said, you know, you like to kind of maybe make a little bit of a joke or smile with uh-huh. your tables. And if, if they can't see All the it, jokes were stopped. Everything just doesn't work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Jokes. And then they started putting little smiley yeah, faces right. on their No mask. smiling. And it was like, oh my gosh, when are we going to get past this? Right. Because this is really just hurting every everybody. Yeah. Not only is do you have a you know rise on depression sure. and all this other you know statistics. Oh. Well, thank God all that's over with. I'm it's getting, all done. Oh, it I'm feels getting, like I'm getting well, stressed. One more just little surprise. About it. <laughs> in my little baggie. Well, you got in you know, Calvin really hooked me up. Oh, yeah. So I had no idea that you did spices as we well oh, and nice. seasoning. And it was between the Creo and the Southwestern. And yep. I thought, well, you know, I do a lot of barbecuing and there you go. That's grilling. Perfect for mm. carne asada right there. That's got a little bit of Tex-Mex flavors. It's great Ooh. on steaks, chicken, chops, that That's kind of awesome. thing. So I tried this on my chicken. I put it in the crock pot and yeah. let it cook all day and seasoned it up. And I was right? like... But that's amazing. Lovely. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So I am so impressed with you, John. <laughs> Thank you. But well, we do a Southwest flavor, a Creole flavor, Bay blend, which is our seafood blend, taco, and barbecue. Barbecue for anything going in the smoker, your brisket and ribs kind of thing. So anyway, we've got them at Bonnells and Waters all the time. Right. So you're like, you're like the starter of a lot of cool things at restaurants. Um, with the, you know things we did during COVID, but then also you have a cool new way to look at your wine list. Yeah. Yeah, so tell us about that. So that's really fun. We've been hoping to do something like this for a long time. Our wine list has 450 wines on it, Mm -hmm. and it's impossible to keep the printed list up to date. Yeah. Every time you order wines, maybe a vintage changes. Maybe you you have one, you lose one. And I always always get so frustrated when somebody orders a wine. I'm like, I am so sorry. I just sold the last bottle of that. But now we have an iPad, and the iPad has a virtual up-to-date list all the time. And if somebody orders a bottle and you go grab the last one, I can run over and boop, it just disappears. You can update your stuff instantly on all the iPads. It's got fun little ways to search it also. You can you can do a little personality test, answer three questions, and it'll give you a list of wines that you're probably into. You can look up celebrities and say, what's Beyonce's favorite white wine right now? All kinds of fun ways to do it, or say I'm only looking for wines between these price ranges or from this exact wine region or uh, reds and Cabernet Sauvignon only. There's so many ways to search it. Or what pairs with this. Yeah, and there's food pairings that I get to do. So they can look through the menu and have a picture of our Oysters Texas fellow on the menu, click the picture, and here's my exact recommendations for that. Oh, I love that. So That's cool. That is so neat. It's a fun toy to play with, and we've noticed that everybody who gets it, instead of just trying to find a bottle of wine, halfway through dinner, they're still playing uh, they yes still, and they start exploring parts of the list that they wouldn't have ever looked at before yeah so do you also have whiskeys and vodka absolutely and now we don't have those pairings. in that particular app right now it's just our wines there but okay. we have a really nice list lots of we call it our wall of brown water back there lots of whiskeys at waters yeah, and i also heard that you did whiskey pairings we do whiskey pairing dinners uh-huh we oh, certainly do nice um garrison brothers is our favorite bourbon right now from texas they're pretty they, good they were the original ones who said you don't have to be in kentucky to make bourbon and they got a permit first one outside of kentucky and started this whole idea that you can make bourbon in other places and i think what they do is just an incredibly unique product and we get to go down once every year or yeah. two and pick a barrel so i've oh, been there a nice. few times yeah. i've been there a few times and it's outside of fredericksburg yeah so it's so, a pretty it's in a town called hot h-y-e yep oh it is yeah. awesome so we'll it's go through we'll go through go. the barrel room <laughs> and you take a drill and drill it find a little trickle coming out of there and then stick this little golf tee hammer it back in to close it up and That's i'll take a few bartenders or managers with me and we will sample barrel after barrel nice. and finally say this is the one we're doing and do our own bottling of one exact barrel to say this is oh, our nice. this is for our old-fashioned at Bonnell's and this will be the 
flavor profile for the old So you carry Garrison waters. Brothers in all the mm -hmm. restaurants. We do. That's cool. I and we that. have a specific old fashioned just based on those barrels we pick out at Waters and Bunhouse. That's great. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Good I stuff. mean, I'm not a huge whiskey fan, but you know, sounds fun. I, I like the sip of it, and I've sure. learned a lot of through the Garrison Brothers how to officially like taste it. Yeah, yeah how to do it right. Because they teach you how to do it right. Mm -hmm. I think if I went to a tasting, I might be more into it, but. Yeah, it's all about opening your mouth That's and opening right. the palate and then breathing it in and exactly. then swishing it in your mouth. A few drops of water, see if that changes it for you, that kind right. of thing, yeah. yeah. And then actually swallowing it, and it's, yeah, it does taste different. Well, it opens it up. There I guess it gets your it. saliva yeah. um, juices going. <laughs> oxidation and all those yeah. subtle aromas and everything can come out yeah. rather than just, you know, taking a shot and feeling a burn. Well, I like the smell of whiskey. It reminds me of my grandpa. When you walk through the barrel room, <laughs> it is one of the greatest smells in the world. Yeah. All of those barrels that are all just putting out that smell together. Mm. That is a, a true experience. Walking yeah. through well, and the I think room. they use their barrels. Yeah. They they use different barrels, right? It, it depends. It's a it's yeah. a heavily charred barrel, and right. some some whiskeys will age for three years, some for five years, seven years. Um, TX Whiskey is another great place to go oh, here, yeah. right in Fort Worth. Yeah, you don't have to drive as far. I've been there several times. And they have a massive barrel room at. Wow, you talk about yeah, a, it's cool uh, looking. a fun sensation walking yeah. through there. Yeah. yeah, It's neat to see how the operations work. Well, I love how you collaborate with all these different local sure. companies. Well, uh, he's a Fort Worthian. Yeah. Right? And, and so independent. Fort Worthians do that. We right? do. <laughs> Fort Worthians are all on the same page, yes. on the same team. And the independent restaurants, to me, are all on the same team, too. Yeah. We like to support each other rather than be you know, one big competition against right. each other. Right. Um, I typically don't support a lot of the chain restaurants, not that I'm against Subway or right. Chick-fil-A or anything. I mean, we, we eat that stuff too, but I'm yeah. not worried about Chick-fil-A's bottom line. You don't have to help I'm worried them out. about the independence and what the character of our city is gonna be right. based on our mom and pops. Yes. From retail to restaurants, that's what shapes the character of a town. And we're better together. Yeah. Right, we yeah. are we're as together. a unity. Yep. Yes. So Angela and I recently went to the um, Fort Worth Food and Wine Festival, oh, and we yeah. noticed that you were there. You got it. <laughs> and you were there all Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yep, absolutely. We were cooking at four of them, and one of them I just stuck a t-shirt and a hat on and snuck in and just ate everything <laughs> I could eat. I'm, I'm sure people recognize. So every time you. we see you, we're like, oh, there's John. There's Let's the guy see. again. Yep. <laughs> and so tacos and tequila, you were doing the brisket tacos. Yep, we did brisket tacos from Bonnell's they the first amazing. night. They were amazing. They were. Mm -hmm. And then breakfast, you were doing um, um, ceviche. Yep. For the Rise and Dine, we did some uh, redfish ceviche from Waters, Sundance Square. Fun that little toast yes. And what did you do for the burgers and, was it burgers and brews? Well, burgers, blues, and brews. John's Grill was out there doing our Caprese burger. Where we do a nice, nice little slider uh, for that one. You have to do sliders because yes. nobody can go and sample whole burgers mm -hmm. at an event like that. And we did uh, fresh mozzarella, mm. uh, cheese, bal balsamic onions, and a nice... Um, pesto aioli on top well, of Well, I have learned a long time ago that you just have to take one bite and then give it to Angela. Right. <laughs> and then she takes a bite and we, we discard go. it because Everybody we can just eat. just split your sliders and find a friend you can, you can yes. go with. Right. You had educated us before and said that there was about 18, 19, yeah. 20 booths. So I feel like there's about 50 <laughs> Because there's so much. Oh, yeah. Not only are you dealing with the food, you're dealing with the vendors, um, alcohol, different Oh, yeah, um, so many breweries out there. And, yeah. sure. yes, yes, and it's just a lot of fun to go. It's always more than you can possibly try, but it is Definitely. so much fun to give it a Definitely. shot. So have you supported them from day one? I've been on the committee since day one. Okay. And I remember when we were originally coming up with the idea for the Fort Worth Food and Wine Festival. And it's interesting because we looked at a lot of other food and wine festivals. There's, there's several in Texas and around the country. and there's kind of one major decision you have to make first. You want to either bring in all the celebrities you can from around the country or focus on your local cuisine. And we decided to focus local as much as possible. We're not afraid to invite lots of other people from around, but we focus on our local cuisine. And then you have to decide, we're trying to make a bunch of money and we're trying to raise a bunch of money. Yeah. So we kept it as a nonprofit and the Fort Worth Food and Wine Foundation supports um, so many things. We started by supporting culinary scholarships Nice. and all of our local high school culinary programs get their kitchens updated upgraded and get these kids to the culinary school on scholarships when needed and then during covid we were able to give out a lot of emergency grants for food service oh, workers great. who were displaced that's excellent that's yeah. awesome is there any other nonprofit organizations that you are involved with <laughs> <laughs> how much time you got yeah here? right like all of them <laughs> yeah you know, um, i at one point i was on 16 different boards i'm Probably still in about 13 I knew or it was. I knew the number was quite high. That's yeah. why I was curious. I do a lot with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Okay. Really like that group, the Sportsman's Club of Fort Worth, 
I'm on the board of the Cowtown Marathon. Just a few of those to get started anyway. Okay. All right. Well, you're a huge Mavs fan. Yes, I'm a big and, Mavs fan. Yes, and they actually have something on their Lexus Club menu from, yep. from you. I am cooking there on um, Wednesday night for, for the first home game in the finals. Okay, here. great. We've done two different nights for Mavs game and one for Stars game so far in the finals. The chef of the Lexus Club and for, that, for the stadium there is an incredibly talented guy. Derek Brewster, and for okay. years he was um, the executive chef at Bonnell's Restaurant. Okay. So he called up and said, do you want to come do a guest spot for yeah. us? If uh, if the teams keep going in the postseason, we can always use a guest spot. Yes. So I'm pretty excited to get to go up there for the finals and go see another one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Do you have two extra tickets? I'm just kidding. Tickets I do not have. I'm the hired help. <laughs> <laughs> we can sneak in with you. We'll just be your helpers. That's we'll right. carry stuff. We'll carry just, stuff. Just hey, find, we love to volunteer. Find your chef code, walk in confidently. I'm with him. Uh, we're with the, uh, Chef Bonnell. Yes. yes, we're here. We're Absolutely. carrying his things. Sure. Okay, so I know Restaurant Week is coming up. So oh, are yeah. you going to participate in that? We will participate in Restaurant Week for all the five restaurants. Uh, usually we do two. It kind of it, it kind of depends, but we're probably doing Bonnells and Waters this year. We'll see if it makes sense. Um, pricing is kind of different with the lower end restaurants, so we'll we'll see if it makes sense for John's Grill at Buffalo this year. We haven't quite decided yet, but okay. we have been doing it. Well, Bonnells been open twenty three years. As many of those as we could, we've done so. Okay, so I noticed that you're a hunter. Uh huh. And do you? What do you hunt and where? Um, I like to go out with my kids more than anything these yeah. days. So we have always started the season off with dove. So okay. September one, um, we hunt pretty close by here in Parker County for dove, and then around Thanksgiving, we always go for deer and turkey. We've got a place just nice. north, a couple of hours, and both of my kids got really big whitetail bucks last year. So we've been doing a lot oh, of venison this year. Thank you, and. Um, my son also got a turkey, so we always try to get a wild turkey for Thanksgiving. We try to do one wild bird and one store-bought bird. That's always my favorite stuff to cook, something that we started with either catching or killing and from the field all the way to the table, that whole experience all the way through to me, that's my favorite yeah. hands-on with your family, with your kids. Now, oh, you know, absolutely. It's the, the best thing tasting the thing, too. Right. I agree. Yeah. So do you do pheasant as well? I love pheasant. Quail, pheasant is a really uh, good, yeah. Every bit of that. You bet. <laughs> is there anything you don't like? <laughs> uh, coffee? Isn't that weird? <laughs> you don't like coffee? I like, what? I like everything except the flavor of coffee. And oh, I know wow. I'm wrong because the world loves it. <laughs> right. It's just me. To me, it tastes burnt. Yeah. It's like fireplace ashes, and I can't do it. So yeah. Yeah, I go the healthy way. I get my Diet Coke in the morning. And okay. Oh, okay. No. Oh, you learn something no. new about John no, every terrible. day. <laughs> okay, right. so do you still raise cattle for your restaurants? So my brother does. This okay. is awesome. He is a professor of medicine at TCU. Mm -hmm. He and his wife are both physicians, and they have eight kids and live down in Toller, right okay. on the Paluxy River outside of Granbury, and he raises Akiyushi beef. All right. So we kind of started this together. We said, you know, I'm wearing the chef coat thinking if it can be the best tasting beef, we'll do it. And he's wearing the doctor's coat saying, if it's the heart healthiest beef, then I want to do there it. We and go. we found something that worked. So it's a grass fed, grain finished, all on his place, Akiyushi and Angus Cross. Oh, wow. It gets lots of marbling, lots of flavor, and we never send them to feedlots. So definitely that is at, the, it's on the menu for Pinnell's. Is, is so, it at all your restaurants? Um, well, the, the way we design it now, all of the ribeyes and tenderloins, the glory cuts, the yeah. great steaks, right. go to Bonnell's, okay. occasionally something at Waters, mostly at Bonnell's, right. and then we grind most of the rest for John's Grill. Awesome. The burger restaurant is all the Akiyushi That's stuff. why the burgers are so good there. Exactly. Yeah. It's a very heart healthy and high end beef, and it's all ours. We go to a processor that does not batch you with a bunch of other people. Right. Our animals are done individually. We know it's safe, we know it's healthy. Those animals never went to a feedlot, so it's not through a real commercial yeah. thing. Oh, well, that's great to know. That's how we come up with, you know, for us, what makes a burger unique? Well, it starts with the best product we can possibly make, and we use local tomatoes from a hothouse that we mm -hmm. really like. I can't produce enough tomatoes out of our garden because it's seasonal, Right. but we partner with a small farm that does. That's really cool. We have a cool. bakery out of Dallas that we use for our buns. That's the kind of stuff we like to do partner with all the other, uh, you know, Well, and I like hearing the history of that because yeah. we had no, I didn't know as a consumer. Sure. I've been to um, John's Grill yeah. quite a few times <laughs> and, the, and the food is amazing. Thank you. Um, but it's such a different menu yeah. than from Bunnell's or from Waters or yep. from... Um, Burgers and barbecue on a college campus <laughs> seems like it should right? work, right? Oh, excellent, yeah. Yeah, they're like, this is the best burger I've ever had. Uh, the other thing that's fun there is, especially for the kids, we do hand spun milkshakes. We have all oh, these really fun goodness. flavors of custom milkshakes. My son's favorite is called You're Killing Me Smalls. And it's a 
kind Yum. of a, a s'mores flavored one and we roast the marshmallow with a blowtorch. Oh porch. my goodness. Now, I love that. We have some boozy ones for the adults too, but kids and milkshakes. This is at the grill? Yeah, John's Grill. I love that it's just so family yeah. oriented. Exactly. I know that you have two children. Yep. So do they love your cooking when you they cook do. at home? Of course. I, I, I will say. I don't want to go anywhere else. My son is 13. He's going into seventh grade. He said the nicest thing he's ever said to me, and he didn't realize it. Everybody kept asking, you know, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite restaurant? And people were saying, oh, I like the, you know, the dish here. And he turned and he said, the food I get at home is the best food in the world. And I, I couldn't talk for a minute. Oh, that's it's a huge true. compliment coming I'm from a 13-year-old. Sure I just wonder, as a professional chef, mm -hmm. and you own all these businesses, sure. if at home it's, like, lagging, you know, because you know, it just depends. Time? I love to cook at home. That is still my favorite thing to do. I mean, professionally, it is so fun to create a dish that photographs well that you can charge a lot of money for mm -hmm. with all these rare ingredients, but then you're going to make it hundreds and hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. At home, what do you want? Yeah. What do you think? Are you, when they were younger, it was easier. To, I would take them to Central Market. Like, don't worry, Mom. I'm taking the kids with me. I got them today. And I would just say, you get to pick any single ingredient out of the produce section, and you get to pick anything out of the protein section. And my son was so adventurous. He'd say, like, and we do that whole octopus. And I'm like, oh, yeah. My daughter would be like, that's the prettiest melon I've ever seen, this horned melon. Yeah. Great, we're going to do something based on that. And just got them to try new ingredients and try different stuff. Now that they're a little older, middle school and high school, they both kind of have some favorites. Are and they interested daughter, in doing it too, uh, Chef? I don't, I don't think they want to do it professionally. Yeah. And if they want to, great. If not, probably easier on everybody. Right. It is not a, an easy profession. Yeah. I love what I do, but the hours and, and you know just what it takes is, is difficult. I feel the same way about hairstyling, actually. Right. Like, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost the same. Like, there's 80% of people that mm -hmm. go to hair school do not do hair in for real life. Right. So that's, you know, same as with the chest. That's right. And it's a hard work. Like, everybody thinks, I can just go do hair, but no. And if you're not passionate about it, it doesn't work for you. Correct. And it right. takes you a while to build up your clientele to even make any money at it. So if you're not passionate about it, you don't love it. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're going to quit. You're yeah. not going to do it. And you stand up all day just like yeah. chefs do. And yeah. we work with sharp and hot things all day. Yeah. So you're always cut or burn. I'm right. always cutting yeah. my fingers. Yeah. I'm always burning. But I don't want my kids to do it. I don't. I'm you've like, it's too, it's too hard. It's too hard. Don't do but it. But I love that you've taught your children how to cook and, and you've yeah. educated them at different, like Central Market. You've taken mm -hmm. them like what a melon is and what an sure. octopus is. Yeah, and, that's cool. And I just think that's so cool that you bring that. Fourth, we so had a lot of fun with it, and you know, whoever gets the Thanksgiving turkey that year, hey, come with me. You we're get to help we're gonna it. do this all the way through, and yeah. we have several different things that we make with it. But on Thanksgiving Day, when family is over and everybody's there, and they're like, "Ooh, this is the one that was your turkey." Well, nice. I like that one better. Yeah. That's that that pride. That right. Mm -hmm. And I hope they you know develop a love for cooking that they want to do forever. Absolutely. So tell us about the boot campaign. The boot campaign, okay, this is another charitable event that I uh, really like to stay involved with. This one is for veterans. Okay. Their slogan on their t-shirts is, you matter. It's all about yeah. treating the mental aspect of veterans' mental health after they come back. All of our soldiers from every branch are trained very specifically to go this direction. Downrange, there's lots of training. Then one day in their life, they turn around and come home, right. and it stops. Yeah. A lot of them have trouble getting back to a regular mm -hmm. life. That's where the boot campaign can come in, help them with resources, help them with medical help, mental health. And once a year, my brother and I run this event we call the Redneck Triathlon. Okay. It's out at the ranch and it is the biggest outdoor carnival just goofing around. It's shooting, fishing, and golf. It's not nice. exercise related. Everybody costumes up and, you know, American flag, just goofy gear and we bring as many veterans out. It's half raising money and half veteran therapy. Okay. And all day, people are gonna tell you thanks for your service. Wow. Teams of four come out to compete and we pair you with a veteran you've never met and you just play these games all day and we finish with a nice big, imagine that, we're gonna finish with a nice meal. Absolutely. Inside an air-conditioned tent and have a fun program and uh, auction and whatnot and raise a bunch of money for the, mm. for the cause and hopefully help some folks out. Awesome. All right. I well, love that. Okay, we're going to talk about products now. Okay, products. What did you bring today with you? You asked me to bring some kind of... Anything. Right, beauty product, anything, anything like that? Anything you put on your body. <laughs> bar soap. All right. I'm a pretty simple read. Bar soap and a bottle of shampoo, and I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much done with the shower. That's it. And it's going to be a two-in-one shampoo. I'm kind of a minimalist. Uh, if I have a, a brush, I can do this. If not, I can do my fingers. And I, I'm kind of a... 
no nonsense fewer products is better than the go. bathroom so kind of guy. <laughs> I have a question. I'm a little inquisitive about this sure. because I, you know, when I was in high school, I worked at different fast food restaurants sure. and and I'm just thinking of one particular. I would come home and I'd smell like barbecue. Oh yeah. How do you get those <laughs> restaurant smells out? Oh man, there's, out? there's there's two smells that will just marinate inside the pores of your being. One of them is the smoker. The if you're smoker. working the smoker, you are going to be 100% yep. barbecue-licious all mm -hmm. day. Or if you're in front of the fryer. Okay, yeah. Especially if you're frying yes, fish. But you when you fry, there's steam and oil. So you just become that. Mm -hmm. And my wife, as soon as I walk in the door, is like... Yeah, go straight. Start start there. Yeah. Then change and come on in. You've got uh, all these that's right. so different shower. flavors. I love what I, I do. You got, you got a shower. I really like, you know, cut the barrier. Shampoo and soap <laughs> totally works, but yes. You need five he's showers a day. He's got the lever 2000, yeah, guys. Yeah, pretty, okay. pretty standard, old school. Make it easy. <laughs> Whatever comes in like a 12-pack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I brought my, it's a glimmer, glimmer stick from Avon, and it's a... Um, like a sparkly thing? It's a little bit of sparkly. Nice. This is the plum. It's called Majestic Plum. Ooh. That's and a it's an eyeliner. eyeliner. Yeah, it's really pretty, pretty, Ooh. pretty purple. It's like a shimmery purple. Nice. All right, so I love perfume, and this one's a travel one, so I can take it on the plane with me. I like. Let's what, see. It fits under that one ounce thing. Yeah. Went, perfect. Yeah, and you can um, twist it. Oh. It's by Chanel, and it's called Chance. Very and it's cool. Pretty. It's one of my favorites. Ooh. But you don't apply it on the airplane, right? No, <laughs> absolutely not. That's one of my it's pet a pretty peeves. strong smell. But it's, a, <laughs> it's a sweet, clean smell. That's awesome. Um, but that's what I like. Nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you look it's right there pleasure. and tell people how they can find you on social medias or your website, whatever. It's, it's pretty easy. The Bonnells Restaurant Group will get you to all of our spots and it kind of filter, filter you out. BonnellsRestaurant.com, BonnellsTexas.com, WatersRestaurant.com. Buffalo Bros, any of those, or just search my name, you're gonna find us. We're pretty easy to find out there. Hit me up on Facebook or uh, Instagram or Twitter. X. All right. Thank you, John, so much. We yes. really do you appreciate Thank you, you so taking much. the time out of your day to my come pleasure. visit us, because we know you're a busy man. No worries, glad to have yes, you. Yes, and we, we're always happy to see you when we're out and about, and we're so thankful that you joined us today. Yes, we're so blessed to have you in our community. Yeah, well, thanks, you Thank too. you. And so thanks for watching us, guys. Please remember to thumbs up and subscribe before yes. you leave. And I'm Angela. I'm Christine. And thanks for watching Hair Color Confessional. Bye. Bye.